Get ready to enter the Thrive Time Show. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Started from the bottom, and we'll show you how to get here. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Now we're on the top, teaching you the systems to get what we got. Colin Dixon's on the hooks, I break down the books. Z's bringing some wisdom and the good looks. As the father of five, that's why I'm a dive. So if you see my wife and kids, please tell them hi. It's a C and Z up on your radio. And now three, two, one, here we go. We started from the bottom, now we here. We started from the bottom, and we'll show you how to get All right, Terry. Clay. Hey, Good to see you. thank you so much for being here today. And we are talking today about the five mindsets a successful franchise owner must have. Um, Terry, I think this is huge because I think a lot of people believe that if they buy a franchise, oh baby, they're just going to be successful. Money will just come in and they'll just, that's it. They buy the right franchise and then they're good to go. But really, it comes down to some of these, these five mindsets they all have to have. And before we get too far into it, I want to ask you, do you truly believe that nearly anybody can become successful as a franchise owner if they buy a proven system and if they're committed, uh, committed to implementing that system with discipline and, and determination? Absolutely. Yeah, you rarely will find that anyone fails in a, in a franchise system who stays inside the guardrails of the model. Who stays inside the guardrails. Can you define what that means in your mind? Yeah, there's, there's latitude that you have within the guardrails to operate your business, but once you get outside those guardrails, you know, it starts costing you significantly in the results. So if you're going to invest in a franchise model, you need to be committed to following that model. I call it the Nike principle, just do it. Just accept it, believe in it, and just go out there and make it happen. You know, I tell a story about, you know, hypothetically about a McDonald's franchisee who's just opening up tomorrow and they're getting their unit ready to open and the owner looks out front and sees the sign truck pull up. The golden arches are already there and the sign truck starts to lift the sign up. It says billions and billions served. He freaks out, throws the clipboard to the ground, runs out there frantically waving his arms, don't put that sign on my McDonald's. And the sign guy is saying, what do you mean? He said, I haven't served any yet. Mm. That's, you know, that, that thing to have it, believe it, that's, to see it themselves before they believe in that model. Now, that's a strange analogy, but that's what you can get caught up in. I see that kind of thing, though, all yeah. the time. So I, I specifically, I've done consulting for a long time, and it's weird. I get, sometimes get calls from people that bought a franchise that uh, are very upset. They think that the franchise itself they bought is faulty. Yeah. And I don't consult with people that own a franchise who aren't following the system. I just won't do it. Yeah. But I usually end up sitting down with them, and I say, look, you're not following the system, and that's why you're not getting the results. Now, you certainly have a, a track record of working with a lot of success stories throughout your lifetime. Mm -hmm. But just to set the record straight and just to kind of give the thrivers out there who are watching this who maybe don't know about your background, mm -hmm. how many franchises or how many people have you helped uh, buy a franchise over the years? Well, we've actually not helped anyone buy one. Okay. As we, what we've learned from 30 years of experience is no one really wants to buy a franchise or, okay. or, or be sold it. They just want to invest and have and own the outcome from it. Hmm. So we've helped people discover how to do that. And over 30 years, there's been tens of thousands of people we've empowered to do that. Plus, we've worked with over 670 different franchise concepts to match them up with. 670. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, we're going to talk about mindset number one from a guy who certainly knows uh, everything there is to know about franchises, or at least almost everything almost. there is to know, um, is you must be a purpose-driven person. Uh, I hear many successful business owners constantly talking about the importance of having a clear vision for your business and life. And there's countless books out there uh, that talk about the importance of having a clear vision. But as a franchise owner, why is it so important for somebody who actually owns a franchise to have a crystal clear vision for their business? Well, you talk about the purpose and you know we, we talked a little bit earlier about the idea of creating the vision of what's going to motivate you to get out there get up every day and drive that business. And certainly franchisors are looking for franchisees that come with what we call batteries included. Hmm. So they have that, you know, that drive that they're gonna succeed in and are willing to do what it takes to do that. So it's, 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 a, it's a mindset, but the good news about a franchise is because it's systematized, 
and it has ways for you to use a recipe approach of building on a predictable outcome of that recipe. A lot of the things that, in the way of mindset will be accomplished as a byproduct of just letting the system work for you. Okay. So if, if I'm somebody who's watching this and I maybe haven't seen any of the other uh, trainings that you have up here or the other entrepreneurs have up here about vision, then what are some action steps that I can do to go ahead and create that crystal clear vision for my business? Well, the first thing you want to do is work with the franchisor involved to focus on the areas that are most critical about performance enhancement associated with the model you've invested in. Okay. So don't get cre too creative about building a plan. The franchisor is going to be very much able to assist you on the elements that are going to be most important that's going to motivate you. Plus, they're going to connect you with similar people from backgrounds and styles that are already achieving income, lifestyle, wealth, and equity in that model that are going to allow you to be mentored by them and to grow. Now, once somebody has a clear vision mm -hmm. for their, their, their life, um, would you recommend that they write their vision down somewhere where they can see it all the time? Or would you recommend, what, what do you recommend they, they do on an ongoing basis to keep themselves on track to make sure that they're implementing the vision that the, the franchisor has, the corporate office, and that they have for their own lives? Well, you certainly want to have it written down. And you certainly want to have visuals that motivate you. Now, the visuals that motivate you may not motivate me <coughs> and vice versa, but it's important to have visuals that trigger the emotions and the drive that for you will get you out every morning driving and implementing on that system. So it's critical to do that. You have to have those things visualized and written down. I love it. So have them visualized, have them written down. Now mindset number two is you must have a desire to master the skill of communication. <laughs> um, Terry, why do successful franchise owners have to be committed to mastering this, this skill of communication? Well, you know, that will vary depending on the, the system that they've invested in and the amount of communication. The good news is, as an owner of a franchise, you're not always going to be the person running the day-to-day -day operations. Okay. Lots of times you're going you're gonna to bring team members in and the franchisor is going to help you bring in the right fit talent to complement the owner's unique abilities, especially if communication may not be one of the high points for them. Let's say that I bought a, a, a franchise and I'm not a good communicator. Mm -hmm. You're saying I can go out there and hire somebody else who is a great communicator. It's absolutely, it's done all the time. Okay, so and what we're saying, I just make sure that the, the thrivers watching this get it. We're not saying that you specifically have to be a master communicator. We're saying that your franchise, in your franchise business, exactly. somebody has to be a master communicator. You, you as the owner need to be committed to make sure that you have that in your team. Okay, and I hope that if you're watching this and you're saying, I'm a bad communicator, that might be something where you might say, well, I'm going to delegate that. And I want to read a quote to stress the importance of having somebody on your team who is a good communicator. Uh, Jim Rohn, the famous success author, he said, take advantage of every, oppor every opportunity to practice your communication skills mm -hmm. so that when in important occasions arise, you will have the gift, the style, the sharpness, the clarity, and the emotions to affect other people. Um, Terry, You've seen it over and over and over, but what happens in business when a business owner, or well, I would say when a business does not have anybody on payroll mm -hmm. who's a good communicator? What happens when, when poor communication becomes the norm? Well, when there's lack of communication or poor communication, things break down rapidly. When you have predictable systems and process in place and the communication doesn't take place, and then people get creative and they move outside those systems and processes. And it's not, then, then you don't have a predictable outcome. What are some examples of things you've seen franchise owners do who were bad communicators? These franchisees who they bought a franchise, they're terrible communicators, no one on their staff can communicate. What are some of the crazy things you've seen happen over the years as a result of poor communication? Well, back in the day when all the updates to the, to the system and the model were sent to the franchisees via mail to add and replace in their manual, there are literally thousands of pictures out there of going into a franchise owner's office and finding three or four years of those unopened stacked in the corner. So that is the epitome of no communication. Uh, so that happens fairly regularly. So one of the keys would be keeping up with the current model practices because they're constantly evolving and improving a franchise model. So if you're not communicating that or if it's not being communicated well within your organization, 
you're going to be actually operating out of what we call system sync. So you'll be out of compliance with the license. Now, if I'm watching this and I'm not aware of whether I'm a good communicator or not, you know, if, I, if, I, if I'm kind of, what are some telltale signs that my company, my franchise I've purchased is not a great communicating business or that I personally am not a good communicator? You're typically in the discovery process of looking at different franchise models, you'll typically discover that prior to investing. If that franchise company doesn't communicate well and there's not good communications between the franchisees and franchisors, that'll come up as part of your discovery process of learning what different business owners have experienced. Now, uh, I've noticed that a lot of successful franchise owners are always talking about the importance of casting a vision, keeping all their players involved. So let's just say that I own a, 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 a some type of grooming business. Maybe it's, a, it's a hair salon of some kind. It's a franchise where we cut hair. That's mm -hmm. what we do. Um, I've got to be able to keep all 10, 15, 20 employees engaged mm -hmm. and wanting to show up at work and do a good job. Otherwise, it doesn't work. How important is being able to cast the vision as it relates to inspiring employees? That's a great point. I actually owned two hair care franchises myself oh, really? years ago. Had uh, 13 to 15 stylists on staff in each one of them. Wow. And it's and in that particular scenario, keeping that in front of them on a regular basis hourly is, is crucial. Uh, but it's not necessarily the owner who does that. The franchise company and the franchisors developed a way for those team leaders and for the managers to understand how to continually motivate and keep those individuals inspired about the vision of why we're here, what we're striving for, having targets that are set up that are motivating for those types of employees, and that'll vary by franchise. If you're watching this and maybe you already own a franchise and you're saying, my team is not motivated, usually it has to do with your lack of ability to engage the employees. And so either you need to find somebody who can do that for you or you need to get good at it yourself. But that, that vision really helps keep people inspired. I want to ask you this, though, is um, it, it seems as though one of the communication skills that you have to have to be successful in the world of franchising uh, and the world of just self-employment, really, is you have to be able to train people, or at least somebody on your team needs to be able to train yeah, people. Absolutely. Um, how important is it for these franchise owners to be able to train their staff? It's, it's critical. It's, it's a crucial result that has to happen, and it has to be predictable, has to be consistent. And the beauty of franchising is that that is the foundation of why franchises are so successful. Because they've mastered the ability of adult education. And it's difficult to train adults. You typically can educate and inform them, but you don't, not always can train them. And they have systems in place, live programs, uh, video programs, and now they have virtual online programs that are constantly allowing the franchise owner to expose their team members and employees to the most up-to-date current training available and then refresher types of situations. Now, John Rockefeller, John D. Rockefeller, the man who was once the world's wealthiest man, he said this quote that always blows me away. He says, the ability to deal with people is as purchasable a commodity as sugar or coffee, and I will pay more for that ability than any other under the sun. Uh, Terry, I've yet to meet a successful entrepreneur um, who didn't have somebody on staff who was a great communicator or they themselves weren't a great communicator. Um, uh, is it pretty much a, a done deal like I'm going to lose if I can't communicate well and, and, or someone on my team can't communicate? I mean, can you really succeed as a franchise owner if, if you're just terrible across the board in the area of communication and training your staff? Well, you can as the owner, okay. but you won't as the operator. Okay. Uh, so, you know, 52% of all franchise businesses today are owned by multi-unit operators. So that owner can't be in all those units at the same time doing all that training, having all that communication. So the key is the franchise concept creates an environment that that communication happens as part of the system. Okay. Now, as the owner, your role is to you know, uh, hire slow and fire fast and make sure that you have that type of an environment in place. If a franchisee's experiencing that they don't have the right culture or the right motivated team members, typically you have to do a self-audit to see whether you're actually operating within the guardrails of that system. So from your, in, in, from your perspective, how important is it that every franchise owner learns how to motivate their employees, bottom line? Is this a big thing? Absolutely. And motivating and inspiring employees today is a full-time job. 
the, the greater majority of employees that are surveyed are lacking the kind of environment that inspires them to do the best they can do. I have said for years, and, and uh, maybe someday I'll get prove, proven right in this, but I've always said that I feel that management really comes down to the ability to, to mentor and yeah. motivate team members. And, okay. and I think that for people like myself, I'm pretty much a, a task-orientated, get-stuff-done sort of person. Um, I wouldn't compare myself to having the kind of intensity, the intensity they have in the military, but people a lot of times will say, well, you're kind of like a military guy, you just get stuff done. Mm -hmm. um, but most people aren't that way, and they need a little bit of mentorship and a little bit of motivation, oh, and, and, and th this is huge, though. Yeah, and motivation is something, you know, there's a lot of motivation out there today, um, and motivation is a good thing, but it's not really the defining factor. Okay. That's why, you know, the environment of creating a coaching culture where you can really mentor and coach your team members to see things that they typically won't see just from motivation or just from communication. Now, mindset number three here is that you must be deadline focused. <laughs> uh, Terry Thomas Edison once wrote that vision without execution is hallucination. Mm -hmm. And as a business consultant over the years, you know, I've often uh, see people that have this great vision, but they are not executing. And they end up having these lives where they're, they're not having a lot of success. And when you peel it back and you peel it back and you really get down to what the problem is, it seems like they're unable to set deadlines to turn their big ideas into these small action steps. You know, it mm -hmm. seems like that's like a huge problem. How important is it in your mind to be deadline focused if you're gonna be a successful franchise owner, be able to get things done on time? In any business, there's only one thing that matters and that's results. Okay. The challenge is that most people come from an environment, a corporate environment, where time and effort is what's really focused on. Okay. And they get caught up in time and effort is important. Look how hard I worked, look how much we did, you know, look how much time we put in, but the results aren't there. So it's really about an, shifting to a results economy okay. and having that kind of focus and deadlines are creating, setting goals and deadlines around those are going to be a part of getting results. It's important. Now, Harvey uh, Mackey, this is the guy's best-selling author, great thought leader, lo love the guy, his stuff, he's syndicated columnist all over the country. Uh, he wrote, he says, uh, deadlines aren't bad. They help you organize your time and they help you set priorities. They make you get going when you, feel, when you might not feel like it. Terry, what happens to franchise owners that are not good at being results oriented or good at, as far as being time managers? Well, we we know in franchising you could have 200 franchisees all operating the same model but have a breakdown of results that fit, typically follow the 20 60 20. Okay. and when you're not good at results you're going to likely or defining actions that'll get you to that you're going to fall below your targets for your business and you're going to consistently fall short of the target you're setting. So you're not going to be satisfied with the results of the business. Can you clarify what the 20-60-20 rule is in case I haven't heard about this before? Sure. I don't really know what it means. In a franchise organization, once they grow beyond 100 units, they have a breakdown of 20% are in the top of that realm okay. as far as results. 60%, which is a wide range, is in the middle. And then 20% are at the bottom. Now the good news is 20% at the bottom, many of those are just getting started. So that's where everybody starts at the building a foundation. But some of them are get, still getting ready to get ready, out, coming out of training. Some of them have not been following the system. They haven't spared their brilliance. They, they want to change the system before they learn the system. And they kind of have a 20% at the lower end. Okay. The 60% in the top 20 all have satisfaction level of what they're doing. If you're not intentional about these types of things and you're not really focused on those, you're going to fall into that 20%. Terry, now we're moving on to mindset number four. This is one that I'm a huge fan of, and I, 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 I think I cannot understand how important this, this, this mindset is here, but it's the mindset uh, number four is you must be a relentless learner. Mm. And uh, Terry, as I've traveled around the world meeting more and more successful entrepreneurs each week, uh, millionaires and everyday success stories, um, it seems as though they're all relentless learners in their own way. Some read books, some take people out to lunch and pick their brains. Some people study the environment around them. Some mm. listen to audio books. I mean, everyone has their own mind the way they do it. But in your mind, how important is it for every entrepreneur who wants to achieve big success to become a relentless learner? It's, uh, it's up there in the top uh, one or two areas as far as 
continual education, continual improvement to yourself and being on top of your game is part of being successful. Um, you know, my favorite uh, saying is it's uh, what you learn after you think you know it all that really counts. Mm. And that's when the learning really starts to apply. Now you can put yourself in environments that you are exposed to learning, but if you think you know it all, nothing changes. Well, let's let, let's a little, little story time with Terry Powell here. We talked a little bit about this off camera, but I, uh, as you know, I named my son after Napoleon Hill. His mm. name's Aubrey Napoleon Hill Clark, and uh, it's because Napoleon Hill wrote Think and Grow Rich, a book that just changed my life. It was just awesome. I remember reading it and uh, thinking about how different my life could be as a result of that. Can you tell me about when you first read Think and Grow Rich and maybe where you were at in life and kind of how that changed your mindset, just that one book? Yeah, I was, uh, I was a very frustrated uh, employee of a company that had hired me from Maryland and moved me to Connecticut to run an operation for them at a, at a very young age. It was unusual to be in that type of situation at my age and quickly became uh, frustrated with that corporate environment, was looking to break out on my own, and was fearful of it, and was reluctant to do it. And a, a mentor suggested the book. And, you know, it really changed everything for me, because the whole idea of thinking to grow rich, you know, really for me kind of simplified it. And it was really about our intentions and our thoughts and the way we thought about how we were going to achieve success that was all that mattered. It wasn't all the other things that I blamed it on or felt that were limiting in you know, situations. It wasn't my beliefs that were limiting, it was everything else that was impacting. And I took control of that. And that one book uh, and the mindset that it, you, the mindsets and the ideas that you got out of it have probably been worth millions of dollars of gross revenue to you over the years, right? Uh, uh, tens of millions of dollars. Tens of millions of dollars, right. that one book. And so I just want to encourage if you, if you're watching this and you're like, bah, what, why do I need to do relentless learning? I just want to make sure that we don't confuse that with, um, I remember going to college and nothing against college and, and there's, there's things you can learn there. But I remember having a class, very in-depth class, and I'm always joking about it because it was so frustrating to me. We were studying the heck out of the Mesopotamia. <laughs> I knew about the, the river valley and the Euf Euphrates and the Tigris River and all these things. And, and I've never made any money as a result of this information. I mean, I, I, unless there's thrivers who are subscribing now because of my vast knowledge of this region. And so I always, when I thought of relentless learning, I'm thinking about, you mean I have to study the Mesopotamia? We're talking about practical education here, right? Exactly. Practical and, and self-development. Mm -hmm. You know, constantly, you know, continual improvement mindset, you know, realizing that you can't stay stagnant unless you want to continue to get the same result. Now, there, there's a quote here by the best-selling author, top-level business consultant, uh, Brian Tracy. <laughs> this quote just blew, blows my mind every time. It says, no one lives long enough to learn everything that they need to learn starting from scratch. To be successful, we absolutely, positively have to find people who have already paid the price to learn the things that we need to learn to achieve our goals. To me, nothing applies more to franchising than this quote. Every single franchise concept had, a, had an entrepreneur who started a business that wasn't franchised, that he decided that by creating the success formula, making the mistakes, that he could then franchise it. And that's how franchisees learn. So if you're buying a franchise, I mean, essentially you're, you're paying a price to not start from scratch. Not start from scratch. And you're learning the system that works and you're, it's replicatable, it's duplicatable, and it allows you to have more success. But you, that's what we're doing. We're basically paying for that relentless learning. So when corporate maybe sends an update via email of something we need to know or a new thing, we need to re read that stuff. We, need, we don't need to put the blinders on here. That's for sure. Now, Terry, from your experience, what types of things do relentless learners do on a daily basis to get that education? Or what kind of things are they typically doing? Is it audio books? Is it reading? Is it, I mean, what, what kind of things do you do or do you see people do that have become relentless learners? Well, I function better in an auditory frame, so I like to listen to things. Really? So that for me is, but I, you know, there's lots of people that use different ways to accomplish that, but you mentioned about surrounding yourself with those people that you aspire to be or that have the experience and knowledge that you haven't been you haven't gotten in your business or in your success criteria and really surrounding yourself I learn more from those others 
or as, at least as much as I do from reading or listening to audiobooks or going to seminars or, or uh, education processes. I just want to encourage, if you're watching this and you say, I really struggle reading. Okay. Somebody else maybe really struggles with audiobooks. Someone else might really struggle. The main thing is to find what works, works for right. you and just don't stop. Be relentless about it. Um, and you want to apply this knowledge, you know, whether it's Steve Jobs or it's Walt Disney or it's you know, countless success stories. Um, I've noticed that all these entrepreneurs have the mindset and the belief that what Napoleon Hill said where he says every adversity, every failure, every heartache carries with it the seed of, an equ of equal or greater benefit. Again, every adversity, every failure, every heartache carries with it the seed of an equal or greater benefit. Um, Basically, the, through failure, you can have learning opportunities. Do you Absolutely. believe this as well? Absolutely. I think I've perfected it. Okay. I've had a, <laughs> We've got to... I've had a lot of failures that I've learned from over the years. And, uh, you know, being, <clears throat> being clear about learning from those. The challenge is a lot of entrepreneurs will not be very good at making mistakes. And they'll beat themselves up when something goes wrong rather than taking the time to learn and grow from that. So if I'm an entrepreneur and I have a setback, let's just say I just ran a TV commercial campaign mm -hmm. and it just bombed. You're saying instead of crying about it and, and making a list of all the things that we're frustrated about, it's better to take a time out and say, okay, how could I make that script better? Or yeah. what station should I run it on? Or, and try to learn from it. Yeah, for, for me, anytime I find myself getting frustrated, yeah. I have to ask myself, how can I turn this into a fascination? rather than a frustration. Oh, wow. That's good right there. That's, that's a nugget. That's really powerful for, for me, and I've helped a lot of people look at it at that standpoint. And once you get into a frustration mode, you find yourself going down that tunnel because something didn't work the way you expected it. Nothing good comes from that. So there's kind of a Terry Powell notable quotable. You're saying anytime you can, you find yourself getting frustrated, you're going to uh, ask yourself how can you turn that frustration into a fascination? Fascination. What's fascinating about this experience, about this TV commercial, that I could utilize to not make the same mistake, but more importantly, improve upon making better choices in the future. That's awesome. And the most important is the, the, sh the least amount of time you spend frustrated, the more time you're gonna spend creating positive results. Okay, maybe a little personal question, but I just wanna ask you this. I mean, we can talk about something that happened way back, so nothing current here, okay? <laughs> but what are, what's maybe an example in your career where you had just a bad deal and you thought, and then you had to take that mindset you had mm -hmm. and go, okay, this is a frustration, but I'm turning it into a fascination. What's an example of something like that? <laughs> uh, probably the one that's most vivid um, had to do with a transaction. I was in the midst of purchasing a, a franchise-related uh, portal okay. and uh, had worked with the founders of the company for a number of years. We were great friends and we had negotiated a price. Everything was in place and we were about to ink the deal and I got a phone call saying that someone else, another larger company had come in and paid uh, considerably more for it. And I was really set back by that because there was a lot of plans related to the company mm. about having that resource. Wow. And it was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a setback. Two years of setback almost. Yeah, it was. And, um, you know, just shifting that gear and, and getting into the fascination of, okay, there's a reason here. So what, we're, what we did is we built our own platforms that really revolutionized the whole idea of portals because the idea of franchise portals has kind of gone away. So I actually, they did me a favor by not letting me purchase that. If anybody's watching this and you're going, well, yeah, that's just Terry's life. I want to encourage you to look into the lives of any successful person. Anyone. Um, Walt Disney's an example where here he uh, uh, basically created a rabbit that he was pr pretty proud about. Mm -hmm. And some things happened and he went into bankruptcy. So then he came up with a new, you know, this is years later, he comes up with a new design for a, a mouse. And I believe the mouse is called Mortimer. Then his wife's like, that Mortimer's not the name you want and you need to change the shape. And then he came up with this thing, which is his third round of revision, this, this obscure character called Mickey Mouse. And now, you know, everybody celebrates Mickey Mouse, yeah. but it was on his third try. And I think a lot of times people don't realize how many attempts is it that, that those mouse that, that original cartoon that set the foundation for Disney, uh, Disney World, and, and all the Disney things we know about today? That took place over a five and six year window of time. This wasn't in like six months. So a two year setback. I mean, these are things that are par for the course. Absolutely, you can you can expect them, 
and welcome them. But you know, take a look at Thomas Edison. Look how many times he failed with the light bulb. Yeah, I had, I had read about him having like 10,000 logged experiments. Okay. I started doing the math on that and I was going, well, there's 365 days a year. I'm not a math guy, but I'm like, well, that'd be like, uh, I started doing the math and I'm going, it's about three years for even, what, this guy was failing for seven, eight years in a row before he came up with an invention that worked. And I just, I just want to encourage you, if you're going through that sort of desert of success right now, you're really struggling, be encouraged. You're, you're in good company if you're having a little bit of struggles along the way here. Now, Terry, mindset number five. Mindset number five, the big five. Here we go. This is the final one, is you must be a tireless self-promoter. Now, Terry, David Packard, this is the guy who's the co-founder of Hewlett Packard. Uh, he's famous for saying marketing is too important to be left to the marketing department. Um, in, in my mind, one of the saddest things I see is where somebody will buy like a, a franchise, whether it be a sign company or a gym or an insurance business or whatever kind of franchise they buy, and they don't market. They don't buy ads, they don't pass out business cards, they don't tell people, and they're just waiting for the phone to ring. And, but in your mind, how important is it? I mean, you've been, you've been in this industry for years. How important is it for the owner uh, of the successful franchise to always be unapologetically promoting their business and encouraging their staff to promote the business? Uh, it's, it's, it makes a difference. It's, a, it's really, it's the defining piece that will move your business to a level that it'll never accomplish without it. And having that mindset about being relentless about it is key because marketing is really the, the, the engine that's going to continually drive. So you don't have these roller coaster types of results of putting some money in. You know, it's like farming. You go out and plant the seeds and, then, you know, some people go out, go back tomorrow and, and dig up the seed to see if it's growing yet or a week later. And in the meantime, they haven't watered it, haven't fertilized it, and they wonder why the crop doesn't come in. Marketing is the basic principle of continually farming using those kinds of principles to make sure the harvest is always there. You just said this, something magical, I think. The, I had a light bulb that kind of went off there. But like, I, I know in, in, in marketing, um, there's a lot of small business owners, and I, I've consulted with them over the years, and you have too, and you have considerably more experience than I have. But what I see, I remember uh, working the first time with a doctor, and he had said, yep, we've completed the marketing. Well, in my mind, that's blasphemy. We are never done marketing. The farmer's never done, what, tilling the soil, planting the seed, watering, harvesting. This is over and over and over. And he said, well, we're done marketing. We've, and, and so year two, after that great first year, he's like, we're done marketing because we're, you know, we're going to focus right now on just taking care of customers. But what you're saying is that it's a consistent, just like farming. I mean, it's the year after year. As long as you, as long as you have a desire to have the crops come in, you're going to need to continue to market relentlessly. And look what a farmer, how relentless farmers are in the way they approach that. That's a great way to think about it. If you're watching this and maybe you're kind of guilty of pulling off the, uh, you're, you're, done, you're done planting seeds for a while right. because you're trying to focus on harvesting right now, it's important that we never stop that process of, of farming and marketing there. Uh, Terry, I appreciate your time more than you know, and I know that there are people who uh, pay thousands and thousands of dollars in consulting fees for people like yourself to help them. And I think it's awesome that people can go online and have some of these insights from your 30 some odd years in the business. Uh, the only thing I question is how you've been able to have 30 years in the business when you're just now turning 27. <laughs> I don't understand. Is it about a fish oil? Is that what yeah, keeps you looking that, so that's, youthful? That's a super longevity program I'm on. Awesome. Thank you <laughs> so much. It. Thanks, Clay. Thank you. The number of new customers that we've had is up 411% over last year. We are Jared and Jennifer Johnson. We own Platinum Pest and Lawn and are located in Owasso, Oklahoma. And we have been working with Thrive for Business Coaching for almost a year now. Yeah, so, so what we wanna do is we wanna share some wins with you guys uh, that, that we've had by working with Thrive. Um, first of all, um, we're on the top page of Google now, okay? Um, I just wanna let you know what type of accomplishment this is. Our competition, Orkin, Terminex, they're both $1.3 billion companies. They both have two to 3,000 pages of content um, attach their website. So to basically go from uh, virtually non-existent on Google to up on the top page is, is really saying something. Um, but that's come by being uh, diligent to the systems that, that Thrive has, um, by, be, by uh, being consistent and diligent on, on doing podcasts um, and staying on top of those podcasts um, to really help uh, with, with getting up on uh, uh, with their listing and ranking there with Google. 
And also we've been um, trying to get Google reviews, you know, asking our customers for reviews. And now we're the highest rated and most reviewed pest salon company in the Tulsa area. And that's really helped with our conversion rate. And the number of new customers that we've had is up 411% over last year. Wait, say, say that again. How much are we up? 411%. Okay. So 411% um, we're up with, with our new customers. Amazing. Right. right. So not only do we have more customers calling in, we're able to close those deals at a much higher rate than we were before. Right now, our closing rate is about 85%, and that's largely uh, due to, uh, first of all, like our Google reviews that we've gotten people really see that our customers are happy, but also we have a script that we follow. And so when customers call in, they get all the information that they need. Uh, that script has been refined time and time again. Uh, it wasn't a one and done deal. We it was a system that we that we followed with Thrive in, in the refining process, and that has obviously um, the four hundred eleven percent shows that 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 system works. Yeah. So here's a big one for you. So last week alone, our booking percentage was ninety one percent. We actually booked more deals, more new customers last year than we did the first five months. Or I'm sorry, the first we, we booked more deals last week than we did the first five months of last year from before we we, we worked with Thrive. So again, we booked more deals last week than the first five months of last year. And it's incredible. But, but the reason why we have that success is by implementing uh, the systems that, that Thrive has taught us and, and, and helped us out with. Some of those systems that we've implemented are group interviews. That way we've really been able to uh, come up with a really great team. Um, we've created and implemented checklists. That way everything um, gets done and it gets done right. Uh, we, it creates accountability. Uh, we're able to make sure that everything uh, gets done properly, both out in the field and also in our office. Um, and also doing the podcast, like Jared had mentioned, that has really, really contributed to our success. But that, like you said, the diligence and um, consistency and doing those in that system has really, um, really been a, a big blessing in our lives. And also, um, you know, it's really shown that we've gotten the success from following those systems. Yeah. So before working with Thrive, uh, we were basically stuck. Um, really no new growth um, w with our with our business um, and we, we were in a rut and we so, didn't know oh, sorry. the last three years our customer base had pretty much stayed the same we weren't shrinking but we weren't really growing either yeah and so we didn't we didn't really know where to go what to do uh, how to get out of this rut that we're in uh, but Thrive helped us with that you know they, they implemented those systems that they taught us those systems they taught us the knowledge that we needed um, in order to succeed now it's been a grind absolutely it's been a grind this last year um, but we're but we're getting those fruits uh, from from that hard work and, and the diligent effort that, that we're able to put into it. Um, so again, we were in a rut. Thrive helped us get out of that rut. Um, and uh, and if you're thinking about um, working with, with, with Thrive, quit thinking about it and just do it. Um, do the action, um, and you'll get the results. It, it will take hard work and discipline, um, but but uh, but that's what it's going to take in order to in order to, to really succeed. So uh, we just want to give a big shout out to Thrive, a big thank you out there to, to Thrive. We wouldn't be where we at, where we're at now um, without their help. Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Moore. I'm a pediatric dentist. Through our new digital marketing plan, we have seen a market increase in the number of new patients that we're seeing every month, year over year. One month, for example, we went from 110 new patients the previous year to over 180 new patients um, in the same month. And overall, our average is running about 40 to 42 percent increase month over month, year over year. The group of people required to implement our new digital marketing plan is immense, starting with a business coach, videographers, photographers, web designers. Back when I graduated dental school in 1985, nobody advertised. The only marketing that was ethically allowed in everybody's eyes was mouth-to-mouth -mouth marketing. By choosing to use the services, you're choosing to use a proof and turnkey marketing and coaching system that will grow your practice and get you the results that you're looking for. I went to the University of Oklahoma College of Dentistry, graduated in 1983, and then I did my pediatric dental residency at Baylor College of Dentistry from 1983 to 1985. Hello, my name is Charles Kolaw with Kolaw Fitness. Uh, today I want to tell you a little bit about Clay Clark and how I know Clay Clark. Clay Clark has been my business coach since 2017. He's helped us grow from two locations to now six locations. We're planning to do seven locations in seven years and then franchise. And Clay has done a great job of helping us navigate anything that has to do with like running the business, building the systems, the checklists, the workflows, the audits, 
um, how to, how to um, navigate lease agreements, how to uh, buy property, um, how to uh, work with brokers and builders. This guy's just amazing. He's, he's This kind of guy has worked in every single industry. He's written books with like Lee Crockerel, head of Disney with the 40,000 cast members. Um, he's friends with like Mike Lindell. Um, he does Reawaken America tours where he does these tours all across the country where 10,000 or more people show up to some of these tours on the day-to-day -day, he does anywhere from uh, about 160 companies he's at the top he has a team of uh, business coaches videographers gra and graphic designers and web developers and they run 160 companies every single week so think of this guy with a team of business coaches running 160 companies so in the weekly he's running 160 companies um, every six to eight weeks, he's doing Reawaken America tours. Every six to eight weeks, he's also doing business conferences where 200 people show up and he teaches people a 13 step proven system that he's done and worked with billionaires, helping them grow their companies. Um, so he's, I've seen guys from startups go from startup to being multimillionaires, um, teaching people how to get time freedom and financial freedom through the system critical thinking, document creation, um, making it, putting it into, uh, or organizing everything in their head to building it into a, a franchisable, scalable business. Like one of his businesses has like 500 franchises. That's just one of the companies or brands that he works with. So amazing guy, Elon Musk kind, kind of like smart guy. Um, he kind of comes off sometimes as socially awkward, but he's so brilliant and he's taught me so much. When I say that, like, I, I, Clay is like, he doesn't care what people think when you're talking to him. He cares about where you're going in your life and where he can get you to go. Um, and, and that's what I like him most about him. He's like, he's like a, a good coach. A coach isn't just making you feel good all the time. A coach is actually helping you get to the best you. And Clay has been an amazing business coach. Through the course of that, we became friends. Um, my, I was really most impressed with him is when I was shadowing him one time. Um, we went into a business deal and listened to it. I, I got to shadow and listen to it. And when we walked out, I knew that he could make millions on the deal. And they were super excited about working with him. And he told me, he's like, I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to turn it down um, because he knew it was going to harm the common good of people in the long run. And uh, the guy's integrity um, just really wowed me. Uh, it brought tears to my eyes to see that this guy, his, he doesn't, his highest desire was to do what's right. And um, uh, anyways, just, just, just an amazing man. So anyways, impacted me a lot. Um, he's helped navigate. Anytime I've gotten nervous or worried about uh, how to run the company or, uh, you know, navigating competition and, 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 and an economy that's like, I remember we got closed down for three months. He helped us navigate on how to stay open, how to, how to get back open, how to um, uh, just survive through all the COVID shutdowns, lockdowns. I'm Rachel with Tip Top Canine and we just want to give a huge thank you to Clay and Vanessa Clark. Hey guys, I'm Ryan with Tip Top Canine. Just want to say a big thank you to Thrive 15. Thank you to Make Your Life Epic. We love you guys. We appreciate you and really just appreciate how far you've taken us. This is our old house, right? This is where we used to live a few years ago. This is our old neighborhood. And see, it's uh, nice, right? So this is my old van and our old school marketing. And this is our old team. And by team, I mean it's me and another guy. This is our new house with our new neighborhood. This is our new van with our new marketing. And this is our new team. We went from four to 14 and I took this beautiful photo. We worked with several different business coaches in the past and they were all about helping Ryan sell better and um, just teaching sales, which is awesome, but Ryan is a really great salesman. So we didn't need that. We needed somebody to help us get everything that was in his head out into systems, into manuals and scripts and actually build a team. So now that we have systems in place, we've gone from one to 10 locations in only a year. In October 2016, we grossed 13 grand for the whole month. Uh, right now it's 2018, the month of October. It's only the 22nd. We've already grossed a little over 50 grand for the whole month, and we still have time to go. We're just thankful for you, thankful for Thrive and your mentorship, and we're really thankful that you guys have helped us to grow a business that we run now instead of the business running us. Just thank you, thank you, thank you times a thousand. Whoa. The Thrive Time Show two-day interactive business workshops are the world's highest rated and most reviewed business workshops because we teach you what you need to know to grow. 
you can learn the proven uh, 13 point business systems that Dr. Zellner and I have used over and over to start and grow successful companies. I mean, we get into the specifics, the specific steps on what you need to do to optimize your website. We're gonna teach you how to fix your conversion rate. Uh, we're gonna teach you how to do a social media marketing campaign that works. How do you raise capital? How do you get a small business loan? We teach you everything you need to know here during a two day, 15 hour workshop. It's all here for you. You work every day in your business, but for two days you can escape and work on your business and build these proven systems so now you can have a successful company that will produce both the time freedom and the financial freedom that you deserve. You're going to leave energized, motivated, but you're also going to leave empowered. The reason why I've built these workshops is because as an entrepreneur, I always wish that I had this. And because there wasn't anything like this, I would go to these motivational seminars, no money down, real estate, Ponzi scheme, get motivated seminars, and they would never teach me anything. It was like you went there and you paid for the, the big chocolate Easter bunny, but inside of it, it was a hollow nothingness. And I wanted the knowledge, and they're like, oh, but we'll teach you the knowledge after our next workshop. And the great thing is we, we have nothing to upsell. At every workshop, we teach you what you need to know. There's no one in the back of the room trying to sell you some next big uh, get rich quick, walk on hot coals uh, product. It's literally, we teach you the brass tacks, the specific stuff that you need to know to learn how to start and grow a business. And I encourage you to not believe what I'm saying. And I want you to Google uh, the Z66 auto auction. I want you to Google elephant in the room. Look at Robert Zellner and Associates. Look them up and say, are they successful because they're geniuses or are they successful because they have a proven system? When you do that research, you will discover that the same systems that we use in our own business can be used in your business. Come to Tulsa, book a ticket, and I guarantee you it's going to be the best business workshop ever and we'll even give you your money back if you don't love it. We've built this facility for you and we're excited to see you. Now you may be thinking, what does it actually cost to attend an in-person two-day interactive Thrive Time Show business workshop? Well, good news. The tickets are $250 or whatever price that you can afford. What? Yes, they're $250 or whatever price you can afford. I grew up without money, and I know what it's like to live without money. So if you're out there today and you want to attend our in-person two-day interactive business workshop, all you got to do is go to thrivetimeshow.com to request those tickets. And if you can't afford $250, we have scholarship pricing available to make it affordable for you.